So I have something very important to share with you guys today that has a, an ecological importance on my backyard. And it really starts with this shade tree right here. This is a, a black cherry. Uh, and this black cherry, every so often, it's not every year, but maybe every other or once every three years, it puts out many black cherries. And these black cherries, um, very unfortunately, uh, what they tend to do is they ripen on the tree and then they fall from the tree because typically there's so many berries and typically there's not enough wildlife to eat all the berries. And the berries fall from the tree and then they start to ferment. And then when they ferment, it actually starts to attract fruit flies. That's Really the biggest thing a lot of us as fruit growers have to worry about is that if you have fermenting fruit, you're going to have a fruit fly problem and it's just not going to be good. It's then going to sort of infest your other fruits, especially the soft flesh fruits, um, fruits that may not even be fermenting to begin with, uh, but they may be attracted to. And it's really unfortunate because then it has a big chain of events. This, this one tree has a big chain of events um, that multiplies that fruit fly population um, and makes growing fruit a lot more difficult later in my season. Um, so this tree, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's so many birds that were, were on this tree and are feasting off of this thing. Finally, at this point of the season, they have come and they're gonna be raiding this tree and getting the remaining cherries off of it. The damage is sort of already done, but I was really um, just kind of negative, uh, pessimistic that maybe the, the birds this year wouldn't migrate or wouldn't find the tree. Um, and I would have a lot of fallen fruit this year off of this uh, black cherry and I'd have myself an even bigger problem. So if we can provide food is really the key here, is if we can provide food for whatever it is that we're trying to attract, Mother Nature takes care of that. That food source attracts the thing that we could potentially want or not want. So if we have fruit flies as an example, and we have fermenting fruit, well then we're giving them a, a source of food and they're gonna complete their life cycle and they're gonna proliferate and they're going to be a problem year after year. So, you know, it's, it's nice in that we could look at this through a lens of, uh, of negative things that could happen, but we could also look at it through a lens of positive things that could happen, right? And I've noticed over the years, and I've talked about this a lot with you guys, but people just don't seem to really get the idea, really get the hint. Um, is that if you really want to have a good bug ecosystem in your yard, the best thing to do is plant flowering plants. And a lot of the, the plants actually that I've planted are, are things like comfrey. And actually very recently we did our first chop and drop of the year. So a lot of my comfrey, which is typically on this side of the yard and kind of like our little food forest area, I have chopped back so much of this comfrey uh, but this is really what brings in a lot of the bumblebees every year. You can see it's actually coming back now. It's so amazing how strong it is. It just keeps coming back. But I keep adding mulch, layers of mulch and piles and piles of different organic material to help build the soil. Because it's not just enough to attract these beneficial insects to hopefully have things like parasitic wasps that maybe hang around something like bee bomb or they'll hang around something like fennel. I typically have bronze fennel over different parts of the yard. I have sedum all over different parts of the yard. Uh, and I've really tried to make it my effort to plant these flowering plants. Even letting some of the annuals just go to seed and letting them do their thing so that there is a source of food, a reason for the good insects to be here. If there's just no reason, they ain't gonna be here. If there's aphids and scale on your trees, the ladybugs are gonna show up. If there is no aphid, aphids or scale on your trees because you constantly are spraying them with whatever it is that you spray them with, you ain't gonna see any ladybugs, you know? Um, so it's just absolutely critical, I think, 
not only do we plant these different flowering plants and have them in high quantity, I'm not kidding, like it's not just enough to grow fruit trees, okay, and have different fruiting plants throughout your yard. I think it's nice. Obviously, it has a great purpose. That's kind of what this whole thing's about for us as humans is to get the food. But if we don't have these other flowering plants in addition to them that hopefully add some beauty um, and also provide this function, it makes growing fruit a lot more difficult. So that's really critical, guys. Um, and the last point, we already touched on it, but it's in the soil. And then if I keep building up the soil and it keeps breaking down, the trees themselves become much healthier. The immune systems of the trees become more healthier. They have better access to nutrients. And then therefore, things like disease, right? We talk about the ecology of these different bugs. We talk about the ecology of those birds. You know, this is all wrapped up into one giant topic of just letting kind of nature do its thing and replicating nature. Um, so if we want to have less disease, we need to have stronger trees that can resist these particular pressures that we may see. So that's how we can become better at this, by the way, guys. Observe and learn from those observations. Make better observations. And then don't repeat the same mistakes if you can. So we'll see you guys soon. Again, thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for more future videos. Thank you.